All right, we're going to break this down. I will make you pass under the rod. Let's look at this rod. Let's look at this rod. We saw it before. We saw this rod before. It's, it's Shebet here. We saw this. What does this mean? You're going to see some. Rod. Staff. We know it as the staff. The man had this rod. The staff. A branch. It shot off from a tree. They got the rods from trees. I don't know. Maybe a shot a tree. A cedar tree. One of those trees that's commanded that we went over. Offshoot. Club. And... Sceptre, very important here. And we also see this word, they always say we are the 12 tribes. So this giving us a, a different um, understanding here. When you look at this word rod, you also see of shepherd's implement, clan, clan here, people. You're talking about a group of people? This is another meaning here. A group of people. All right. Let's see this. First, Leviticus 20, 27, 32. Read this. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, of whoever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be kadosh to Yahuwah. So this is concerning. He's giving here laws for... The tithe concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock or whatever passes under the rod. These right here, they're passing under the rod. They're under this rod. This rod gets them back in their right state where they should be. The tenth shall be kadash to Yahuwah. All right. So this is another rod here that they're talking about. And you see it according to the tithe of the herd, the flock, even whatsoever passes under the rod. And you look here, this is the same rod, the H7626. It's the same rod. Let me go back to the other one because I didn't read the number. H7626. All right. He said he will bring us into the bond of the covenant. And of course, we know this bond of relationship between people or groups based on shared feelings, interests, or experiences. Join the verb, join or be joined. When you go back under the rod, and he's going to bring us into the bond of the covenant. He's talking about joining us to his Torah. We know this. This we, we, we know. So he's going to join the people back to the Torah. You, we're going to get the teaching. Once again, we talk about this a lot and we understand this. You notice here, especially by means of adhesive, adhesive substance. It's cool. We're going to be able to stick to this Torah. No one will be able to pull us off of this Torah. I know you probably saw the video of the, the woman that put Gorilla Glue in her hair. That was an adhesive substance in her hair was stuck to her head and no matter what she did it didn't work so we want to be stuck to the father's pure Torah just like her hair was stuck to her head all right we have to deal with the scepter Genesis 49 10 read this the scepter shall not depart from Yehuda. The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda. Now, we've seen this before. We know of the scepter. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes, 
and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Um, yes, the scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor the lawgiver between his feet until Sheila comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. The people will. Be, why can the, why are the people obedience at this point? They would have received the pure word of the Father. Now let's see the scepter. We saw that the rod is the clan. They re, they translated as tribe. You're talking people. Here is the scepter. The same word. The H7626. The same Aubrey word. You got to understand this. And of course, I will touch on somebody, somebody, someone may be asking, what's Sheila? This is the Aubrey word here, 878-86. You notice Sheila only in the scripture once, one time, one time. He whose it is, that which belongs to him, tranquility. Then it has meaning uncertain. This was a type of mystery. But we know who this is. It's of the Mashiach. We know the coming one. You have to connect other verses, other verses from the prophets. This is talking about the coming one that's going to cleanse the sons of Louis that Yehuda's offering will be righteous. All right. But look at this connection. I Google tree and look what it is an ornamented staff carried by rulers because remember it's synonymous with people but it's also a staff carried by rulers on special occasions of of course a symbol of sovereignty i begin to see it it was clicking on all cylinders I began to see it at this point. Sovereignty? It's a symbol of sovereignty? I hope you can see where is this going? Where are we going with this? Where's the Father going with this? See, as I said, we've been tiptoeing around this. And now we're about to see what's going on here. How many times we went over Joshua 77? 38 through 51. Come on. And afterward, Moshe went into the garden of Rawal, which was behind the house, and he there prayed to Yahuwah his Lord, who had done mighty wonders for him. Mm -hmm. And it was that while he prayed, he looked opposite to him, and behold, a sapphire stick was placed in the ground, which was planted in the midst of the garden. So there was that sapphire stick. We've seen this over and over. Over and over, we know the story. We've been getting it over and over, but the father said we missed something. And now it's time for us to get what we missed. Anytime, he, listen, I'm open to him. Anytime he want to speak something that I don't know, or I need to know, or he want me to know, he allow his, his Ruach to speak a word. And I, I hear the word, and then I dig into the word. And that's when you'll see it. Sapphire stick. This is the stick. This is the rod. Come on. And he approached the stick, and he looked, and behold, the name of Yahuwah, the Lord of hosts, was engraved thereon. So we know his name was on, the Most High name was on the stick. And he in um, Exodus 3 asking, what is your name? What, what, what shall I say unto them? If they ask me, what is your name? What shall I say? His name was on the stick. Written and developed upon the stick. Written and developed upon the stick. And he read it. And Moshe read it. See, we have to read this because people think he got the name when you get to Exodus third chapter. See, he he listen, Moshe, when he got the stick, he got the name. He had the name. 
He was just looking for a way out. <laughs> well, well, what about, well, you know, they, I go to them. Who, who am I that you would send me? He was looking for, you got the wrong one. Send someone else. Send Aaron. I'm the man with stammered lips. Uh, stammered tongue. I can't, my, I'm, of, I'm of a slow speech. He was just looking for a reason not to go. What do I say in your name? They asked me, what's his name? What shall I say unto them? The father got hot with him. Listen, man. That's when he said, Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya. I will be that which I will be. I'm the existing one. He was saying, besides me, there is no one. Moreover, that's when he revealed the name. Moreover, when he said moreover, there's more. I hadn't even told you my name. And then he said, this is my name for all generations. That's us today. That name is for us today. And he read it and stretched forth his hand and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket and the stick was in his hand. The stick was in his hand. Oh my goodness. The stick was in his hand. He, he pulled it up. No one, you know the story, we went over this. No one could pull the stick up. None. And here he is. The stick in his hand, mighty and strong men tried to pull the stick from in the ground. It was planted and none could pull it out. But see, notice Moshe said the name. Moshe was the one. He was the chosen one. He was the deliverer. He was the one Miriam prophesied coming. They knew he was coming. And then when he came, who are you? Who sent you over us? See, these people don't know the most high. They done miss. They missed the prophecy. And that's how people today come out of her, my people, that you partake not of her iniquity and of her plagues. Ah, uh, who said that? Who brought you? Who sent you? When we make these words come to live in people's um, ears, who sent you? Who are you? And this is the stick with which all the works of our Elohim were performed. So this is that stick, the rod which all the works were performed. After he had created heaven and earth, and all the hosts of them, seas, rivers, and all of their fish. But when Elohim had driven on first man from the garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and went and tilled the ground from which he was taken. And the stick came down to Noah and mm -hmm. was given to Shem and mm -hmm. his descendants. Mm -hmm. Until it came to the hand of Abraham, the Aubrey. Mm -hmm. And when Abraham had given all he had to his son Yishkak, he also gave to him the stick. So this stick came down from the first man, went to Noah, Shem, and his descendants, and it came into the hand of Abraham. And when Yaakov had fled to Padan Aram, he took it into his hand, and when he returned to his father, he had not left it behind him. Mm -hmm. Now it's in the hand. It went down to, it, it went down to Yitzchak, down to Yaakov. Also, when he went down to Mizraim, he took it into his hand and gave it to Yosef, one portion above his brethren, for Yaakov had taken it by force from his brother Esau. So now it ends up in the hand of Yahusef. And I want you to understand something. We'll, we'll bring that point out in a minute. Keep going. And after the death of Yahusef, the nobles of Mizraim came into the house of Yahusef, and the stick came into the hand of Raul the Midianite. And when he went out of Mizraim, he took it in his hand and planted it in his garden. Mm, that's how it got planted in his garden. The Most High set this up. And all the mighty men of the Kenites tried to pluck it when they endeavored to get Sippor, his daughter, but they were unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. So that stick remained planted in the garden of Raul until he who came had a right to it and took it. And when Raul saw the stick in the hand of Moshe, he wondered at it, and he gave him his daughters of poor for a wife. So he saw the stick in his hand. He wondering how in the world he was able to pull the stick up. He was not supposed to be able to pull the stick up. Who? How did he do this? He marveled. He wondered after it. And then he gave him his daughter. Zippor's wife because this is what he said the man that pulled this stick up he would give his daughter to that one of course this man um he was a, a, the priest of Midian the man that he gave 
his daughter to? He was a man of understanding. He was a mighty.